So here we are, the end of the light and darkness saga. Did Bungie actually lock in this time? Well, before we get into all that, I just want to explain where my headspace was with this game before the final shape came out. So Lightfall came out and I was super disappointed. I mean like one third of my video was complaining about Lightfall, which thanks for the support on that video, by the way, I really appreciate it. Anyways, once we got to Season of the Deep, I just gave up on Destiny. However, I came back for the last season just to prepare myself for the final shape. I still wasn't very hyped, but as more trailers released, I started to get a bit more hyped. Then in the last couple weeks, I was actually hyped for this expansion. I was still skeptical because, you know, Lightfall, and I didn't really want to fall into the same trap. So I just pre-ordered the normal version, not the deluxe version, because I didn't want to waste $100 if the game was bad. And so I played it on day one. And these are just my thoughts after, you know, completing the whole campaign and finishing it. So, yeah, this video isn't scripted. I just have some notes here that I have of, like, things I want to talk about. So if I start to ramble, I'm sorry. I'm not a professional. Um, this video does contain spoilers on the story. So if you haven't completed the story and the final mission, then go do that. And one last thing. There isn't going to be a big variety of gameplay footage in the background that I'm probably going to put because I wanted to record the whole campaign, but it would have taken up a lot of space on my hard drive. Like I recorded the first mission, like just the first mission, and that shit got up to like 15 gigabytes. So yeah, enough about that. Let's just get into the story. So first off, the story is better than Lightfall's story. I know, what a shocker. It's kind of really easy to uh, improve on dog shit, but hey. That's a, that's a point towards it. The missions are longer. The campaign probably takes about five hours to complete, maybe like four and a half. But you know, we had me and my friend D'Angelo, we had some server issues on day one. So that probably like, it probably took us like an extra like hour, hour and a half to complete the campaign than usual. But I'll get into the server, server issues later. But yeah, the missions are longer and I like the more variety that we have in terms of locations. This also goes for like just the destination in general. Um, next thing, Kate is back. Thank God. Um, he definitely, it's definitely nice to have him back. He definitely brings like a lightheartedness that, you know, we haven't had in a, in a while, you know, he's still got his, you know, K charm and everything, but I felt like, I'm just going to side rant a little bit. I felt like after, like, even though in my video, I kind of made like, some some like notches towards Cade about how he wasn't really funny which I mean looking back on it you know I, I'm not I'm not entirely like I don't really agree with what I did back there in that video like Cade can be funny you know obviously comedy is subjective but you know I felt like Cade was just kind of like a mood lifter you know I felt like once Cade died they kind of tried to make like mood lifter funny characters like, first we had Finch. Like, I they probably had more before then, but the one I can think of is Finch. Where, like, he kind of he kind of had, like, some, some like, wisecracking. Like, he kind of had some one-liners here and there. But for the most part, he was fine. I didn't mind Finch that much. Then we had Nimbus. Um, I wasn't real. I didn't think... I cut this out of the video, cause, out of my video, because I was, like... I didn't really think it fit, because I really wanted to just talk about the story and just... All that stuff so I didn't really want to rant about Nimbus but Nimbus I hate I hate Nimbus I think he's unfunny I think that none of his jokes landed it's just like he he felt like a Marvel character put into the universe he just felt so just like he just felt so out of place it was insane and when when Rohan died and he just all of a sudden got super sad and we're just all of a sudden supposed to care when 99% of the time before this he was like super jokey and you know trying to make you laugh and everything and then i remember at the end when at like the final cutscene after we kill callus and you know Kaido's all sad you know because her dad just fucking died because you know we had to kill her dad because her dad was kind of an ass you know he just comes in flying in on this sur on his surfboard during like this emotional moment with Kaido, which you know should have probably had more more like at least a bit longer to like just like take it in he comes in flying on his fucking surfboard 
and then he goes in, he says a Marvel one-liner and then he goes in for a fist pump like I just felt like that was just like I just felt like that was just super super tone deaf and just out of nowhere and it just did not work at all and then right after that it goes into like the the super serious thing with like your ghost and everything but whatever this isn't allowed life all I'm I'm ranting again about life all again oh my god anyways back to you know Cade he's he's great to have back um I like what they did with Zavala I like how they they took like his whole story thing about faith and how you know he always believes in the traveler and they kind of like twisted that to where he's starting to not believe in the traveler you know he wants to see he wants to take other ways he doesn't really believe the traveler because we kind of had this we had a little bit of it in beyond light where he was like oh don't use stasis because it's part of the darkness and then which we that wasn't really much of like character development of because he mostly believes in the light you know zavala but i felt like in witch queen witch queen we had that one cutscene where he he was like getting all mad because that was after we found out that the the traveler gave savathun the light and so it was it was interesting to see like how his faith was being challenged there but here they really take it up he sees like his old house and then you know he sees his his dead wife we also kind of I completely forgot to mention this right now, but I just realized right now, but we also had character development of him in the Nightmare season, I forgot what it was, where we were back on the Leviathan, where we had to help him through his whole thing. But I felt like here they really, you know, they really wanted to develop Zavala more. And I felt like what they did with him was really interesting and really nice to see, because we really hadn't had anything with him. And then just as a side note, um, Keith David as Zavala, um, sadly, the original voice actor for Zavala, Lance Reddick, passed away. Very unfortunate. So, they had to get Keith David. And, you know, I like Keith David. He's pretty cool. Um, I felt like he did a good job as Zavala. In the first cutscene, it felt like he was, he was doing a pretty good impression of just the normal Zavala voice. But then as time went on, you know, he kind of just started doing his, his just normal Keith David voice, which I don't mind, you know. It doesn't, it, it still kind of sounds like Zavala. It doesn't completely take me out. Or it sacrificed itself to save humanity from the same forces. Forces which included the Hive! After all that, why would the Traveler give our worst enemy the light? I won't lose another soldier in this war. We're not done yet. Crows intercepted Shadow Legion chatter to and from this outfit. This is a widespread operation. The amount of cutscenes that was in the campaign was actually really nice to see. And you know, the emotional beats hit, like when when Ikora and Zavala met Cade, that was really emotional. That was really nice to see. And then the final the final battle, like not the final final mission. But like the final mission of the campaign where you know the witness was there and came out of nowhere that was cool i did not expect that at all vigilant stay alive oh shit, oh, shit. even though you know they kind of just like teleport around and you know shot projectiles at you it was still cool to see them and then the ending where, you know, we had to escape and everything. That was cool. And then, I thought that this was weird at first, but, you know, it kind of grew on me. Where, once the campaign was done, who the f- What is going on outside? Anyways. So, yeah, I- I kind of was kind of mixed on it. But it kind of grew on me. How, like, once the campaign was, was done and we finished the final mission, we had to wait three days until the raid came out and then we could do, like, the final final mission. I was kind of mixed on it because I was like, I was like, it's kind of weird how, you know, we have to wait for the ending, but it makes sense. You know, we're, we're taking three days to prepare our full blown attack of the witness. So, you know, I also like it because it gave us some time to, you know, do, do quests, you know, explore the new destination, you know, and just do all that stuff, unlock new fragments and stuff for Prismatic, you know, do the ghost quest for Micah. I liked how it gave us time to, you know, just kind of chill out, do that stuff, and then go into the raid, and then go into the final mission. 
I like that. I thought that that was that was a nice you know change of pace than you know just completing the whole campaign and then that's it. You know you're done. Um, speaking of the raid, it does look crazy. I haven't played it yet because you know I just haven't been able to get a team to you know do it with. Um, and also because you know I'm trying to just get this video out. But it looks pretty crazy. I know that during the final raid race, like the fourth, the fourth encounter was like took people so long to do. I've seen some gameplay footage of it, and it, I just like I I can't I can't even understand it. Like I don't even know what's going on. Like I watched a video where they just had comms muted, and I was just like, damn, bro. Like probably with comms, it probably makes a lot more sense. But without comms, it just it just looks so unreal. So I'll have to see how that is. The final mission, like the final final mission, was was crazy. Twelve player activity, that was cool. Where you saw like all like the different characters, like you saw Savathun, you saw Saint Fourteen come in, you saw you know Keitel, you saw Mithrax the goat come in. Even though you know my PC was kind of dying because the amount of VFX and the amount of shit that was being that was happening. But it was fine. It was fun. I liked it. Um, same with the ending. The ending was just so good. Like, they actually ended it well. They actually, I think that they ended the campaign, or not the campaign, but I think that they just did the ending in the best way that they could. You know, your ghost, your ghost, you know, dies. Cade comes in and sacrifices himself, which I did not expect. You know, we just got Cade back and then they, they take him away again. But I felt like it was emotional because, you know, we got Cade back and, you know, it was nice to have him back and then we lose him again. So, you know, that was just, that was just, it hit, man. Like, I actually did not expect it to kind of hit a little bit. And then we had the ending. They teased, like, the episode, like, episode one, how there's, like, stuff going on, like, in different parts. Like, Zivu with Arath is still out there, which whatever's going on with her and then we still have episode one which hasn't come out yet at the time of me recording this and i'm interested to see what happens with that but yeah that's that's the story um i didn't think that the that bungie would actually stick the landing with the ending but they did you know this expansion's campaign is definitely better than witch queen not saying that witch queen's campaign is bad because i mean witch queen campaign up until now was the best campaign we'd ever had but this campaign, I just think was just, just better. You know, like I said, the emotional moments hit. You know, we got more insight into characters like Zavala, Crow, Cade. Let's get into the gameplay. Um, we got Prismatic. A lot of fun, been using it. I like the balance that you have to use light and dark. You can't just use light or you can't just use dark weapons. You have to use both. And, you know, it adds more variety in terms of like, you can just create builds you could create crazy builds or you could just kind of just use whatever you feel like whatever abilities you feel like you just like a lot like personally i like using you know the shield throw because you know i just like using the shield throw it's just, it's just satisfying to me and then you know the suspend grenade the shackle grenade for strand is also really good i also like how for prismatic the more kills you get the more like it refreshes so like if you just pop it in front of a bunch of enemies and you just get a bunch of kills you're just gonna keep going and going and going so i like that i like how long it lasts that's really cool i've been liking the, the new super for titan i don't know how the other two supers are for hunter and warlock but i like the new super twilight arsenal i like the damage i like how you can pick it pick up the things and then just throw them or you could just use them as just like a melee weapon that's cool we also got the exotic class items, which are coming soon. They haven't come out at the time of me recording this. You're always late as usual. Here, let me take over. Hey, so since Derek has taken so long to finish this video, like always, the exotic class items and the new episode are available. And since Derek's gonna be recovering, I'm going to update this video myself. So to start with the new episode, <clears throat> It's decent so far. Definitely interested to see how the story plays out. However, I'm worried that the seasonal activity will become stale and boring like usual. We'll just have to see. Next up, we got the exotic class item mission, which is actually good. 
The mechanics are fun, and that ending was very unexpected and a nice twist. Um, hi. Wait! We're fighting. Ain't no way. Damn, I just- I didn't have- I didn't- I could've put on my fucking crucible shit, I was just sticking with what I got. What? You can kill me? Wait, you could kill me. Excuse mercy. What? Wait, wait, I'm actually- wait. I can respawn. I can res- I- I don't know, do I- should I kill you? I don't know. <laughs> I'm killing you. Man. Oh, it killed me. Oh. You sweet gullible killers. You'll follow any voice loud enough to command your attention. That's crazy. That's crazy. Wait, that's actually kind of sick, though. I do feel like over time, the mission will become boring to run repeatedly to get different roles on the class item, especially since the mission isn't that hard. But hey. Bungie actually cooked with this one. Also, you can't solo it. You have to have someone else, which people are mad about, I guess. Like, yeah, you can't just grind it solo because of the way the mechanics work, but I think it's fine. There is a fire team finder mechanic in the game. Anyways, enough from me. I'm gonna go pre-order Black Ops 6. Ugh. What was I gonna say? Oh yeah, the dread. Aha, Jonathan, you are banging my daughter! So we got the new race, the Dread. Um, I like them. They're nice to see. We haven't really had a new race since the Scorn. I mean, obviously we've had, like, the Loosened Hive, which, I mean, you can count, but, I mean, we only really got three new enemies with that, and, you know, they were basically just recolors. And then in Lifefall, we got the Tormentors, which, I mean... That was cool to see, but it was just one new enemy. So it's nice to see a whole new race of enemies. Although the amount of times that that bat enemy has ran in front of my rocket launcher when I've tried to shoot a boss and it's killed me, way too many times to count. Um, we got the new ex we got new exotics. Um, I haven't tried every one of them out, but I've tried out the golden gun sniper and then we got the exotic sword with random rolls, which by the way, when I realized in the final cutscene that that was the sword that was on our grave, that was really fucking cool. I was actually interested to see what the fuck was gonna happen in the ending after I saw that in the ending cutscene of the campaign. Then we got this new Pathfinder system where you can do like little objectives, like you can do like these little small objectives and then once you complete like basically like a map, like basically like a path to the end, you can get, you get rewards. I like that. It, add, it I think it's a good addition. It adds more side things to do for activities because it doesn't just apply to the new to the new destination. It also applies to Crucible, Vanguard, and Gambit, which they all link to just one Pathfinder thing. But I think it's good because you know it adds variety. You know, it just it just gives you more things to do, which I always like. And then we have the new weapons. Um, not really much to say about them. They're all decent except for the Call Pistol, like the. The strand pistol that shoots out like little like little missiles that I love I love that pistol I love how much damage it does it's really good I love that pistol um next up we got Micah 10 with her whole ghost quest where you got to find the ghosts um I like how there's one where you can just do infinitely like there's one quest that you could just do infinitely for red borders I really like that you know all the more chance to get red borders you know I didn't really like the grind that you had to do originally when Witch Queen came out for Red Borders. It was really annoying. So I like that. I like it. You can do them infinitely. Um, the main ones where you had to go into like a strike or go do like an activity and then get to the end to find like the ghost to, you know, go find them. And then you brought them back for the rewards. I did not think that they would go on for that long. Like I did not think that there were that many ghost quests. Like, I think I've done, like, ten of them, and I'm still going, man. Like, I still got, like, another three I gotta do. They're kind of boring. You know, you just go into a thing, you go through the whole thing to, you know, you go through the whole strike or whatever to get, just to get to the ending where you grab it. But, I mean, hey, it's more stuff to do, and, you know, I can't complain about more stuff to do in Destiny, because I hate when you just don't got stuff to do. Um, the side quests in general were fun. You know, the one where we got 
where we helped Savathun. Then the one with, um, with Zavala, where we got more stuff with that. I just liked it because it gave us stuff to do for three days. There was just a lot of stuff to do. For, so, you know, when we had those three days to prepare for the ending, that was nice. Um, I haven't even, I can't believe I've even gone this long without talking about the new destination. It's good. I like, like I said, when I was talking about the story, the variety in locations is good. I like the, just, I like the variety. The overthrow activity, it's fine. I like how it refreshes in five minutes once you complete it. Cause you know, if you had to wait like a long time, that would have been annoying. I feel like it's going to get boring after a while. You know, once you've seen like every possible, possible like variation of like, of like thing that can happen but for now it's fine i like it as well i also like the random objective chests that are around the areas like those little things where like you have to activate them and then you have to do like a little challenge like there was one where i had to drive around you know i had to drive around on my sparrow and get and run into all like the the columns before time ran out and then i, I remember there's another one where if you get like infinite grenades and you just have to like destroy like these little pus balls so i mean they're fine you know they add little things to do in the destinations other than public events and the overthrow activity. And the last thing I want to mention about the gameplay is just the server issues that were that were going on during day one. I definitely think it was really annoying. Um, I mean, bro, I was in queue for like an hour and a half after servers went up. And even even though even after I got in, um, when me and my friend D'Angelo were on the last mission. We actually got kicked, like, after we finished, like, the first, um, after we finished the first encounter, like, the first, like, yeah, after we finished, like, basically, like, the first encounter of the witness fight, we got kicked out, and then, because the servers were so bad, we couldn't even start the mission up for, like, another, like, 15 minutes, so that was annoying, but, I mean, I can still look past them, I can see why people were really mad about it on day one, you know, because it was really bad, you know, sometimes you just couldn't even go into a destination because it was just it would just kick you back to orbit. So that was really annoying. But I still had fun with the campaign and everything on day one. I can look past it. I just see why people were mad about it. Um, I think that's all for the gameplay. You know, the gunplay is still good, but you know, just the improvements and the new things that they added, just it's just so good. It's just the gameplay is just so nice. The grind right now is so nice. So yeah, that's all I basically have to say. Um, final thoughts. Um, I actually can't believe Bungie actually pulled through and made a good expansion that wraps up the story in like such a good way. Like I had my doubts, you know, especially after Lightfall, but Bungie actually proved me wrong. You know, even though the server issues were really bad, I can still see that this expansion is probably the best that they've ever made. Like passing Witch Queen, passing forsaken i think that it's really good the story the weapons prismatic des the destination the ending it's all just been amazing now all that's left to see is where destiny goes from here however i think i have one big problem with the final shape that i have not mentioned yet and this is directed at you specifically bungie i'm directing this at you so you better listen up all right why did you have to make the game good again? Now I have to play the game more. God fucking damn it.